Happy New Year. It is time for another Let's Make It, the first one of 2014. And Bob is back. And tonight, he's going to show us how we can time things with the 555 timer. Coming up right after this. Hello and welcome to Let's Make It. It's been last year since we did a video. It's been three weeks uh, since we did our last video and we took the end of December off. So uh, we just took a little bit of time off, do some re read stuff in the studio here, some projects that were going on, things like that. And this time I also am lucky enough to have Bob back with me. How you doing, Bob? I'm doing great. So it's good to be back. Yeah, good to be back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, you had a little bit of a rough time there, didn't you? Uh, yeah, spent uh, most of the month of December in the hospital. So it's back to be, it's nice to be out and back with the living again. Yes. All right. So this week, uh, this is episode, I didn't say this in the beginning, this is episode number 48 and recording on the 6th of January, 2014. I almost did 2013. I'm still doing that. I keep correcting myself. Well, it'll, it'll take a little while. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I do want to thank anybody who uh, used our link to buy things through Amazon in December. Um, you don't have to stop. You can use that all the time. It's still there, so you don't have to stop using it uh, just because the Christmas is over. I also want to thank people that have been telling their friends about it. This show has been growing uh, really fast. Even in December when we weren't doing shows, our download numbers still stayed very high on the old shows. Just so just everybody's you know, spreading it around or finding it on the Internet or whatever, telling your friends. Definitely appreciate Anything you're doing to help us to help us spread that out. I was a little concerned about tonight and looking at the chat room. I probably was probably right. Taking some time off like that uh, generally gets people out of the habit of um, coming to watch live. And I don't think we have anybody in the chat room tonight other than than Bob and I. We did have somebody in there. Jim Jim from Canada was on there a little bit earlier, but he's not on there now. Um, but you know we're back to normal. So we're we'll recording every Monday. The vacation's over, or what was supposed to be a vacation, I guess, is over. Yeah, it's time to get back to work. It's January <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, actually, um, I worked pretty hard during that time off with things around here. So uh, that's a fair warning. Things are going to be going to break uh, possibly during the show because lots of new things that we're using. Uh, in fact, something already broke. If you're you're watching this, you don't know it because we we had to restart our recording because of it. Um, so before I get uh, let Bob get into this his discussion tonight, uh, I want to talk about some things that I've actually uh, gotten in the last few weeks that I really haven't had time to play with yet, and I'm. I'm really itching to play with it. This first one is uh, a beagle bone, and uh, it is not it's similar to an Arduino, but I think it's considerably more complicated. It can do a lot more than an Arduino can do. Um, the little bit that I've read about it, there's a lot more it can do, but it takes a lot more work to um, to make it do things. It's, you know, Arduino is designed to be a real quick prototype and, and learning tool, where this is. Um, Originally designed to be a teaching tool, but it's definitely much more complicated. But I'm looking forward to it because the the switcher that I have developed, I am running out of memory. In fact, I want to do a show in a couple weeks about memory management because I've learned a lot the last uh, couple weeks in memory management. And then uh, the other thing here, and I actually got two of these. It's called a Spark Core, and it comes in. It was a quick Kickstarter project, and let me pull it back out here. It's um uh, it's on a breadboard right now, but basically it's a dip device and if you take it off and look at it the uh, top side of it is a wi-fi um, interface and the bottom side is a micro i think it's mic what's the real small arduinos micros right or minis um the mini mini okay so i think it's a, i think it's a mini that's in there so it's all in one one chip and it's a wi-fi and i want to do a whole show on wi-fi and i've been meaning to do it uh, this may just get me to do it. And I have a project I want to do also um, that requires Wi-Fi. So this may be the, the catalyst uh, that gets me going on that as well. And this last thing Bob's going to know, it is a 16 by 16 uh, LED array that I got off Kickstarter. And Sweet. yeah, they are. Uh, I, I'm, I want one. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait to get the power supply. I, I actually um, don't have a power supply big enough to run it. It requires a 15 amp uh, 5 volt power supply. And I don't have one that big. I've never 
I don't think I've ever owned one that big, actually. So when you order them, they're actually quite large. And they do make them. They're just for LEDs, for the LED panels and the LED strips. Um, so uh, this uses the individually addressed trip, chips, which is the uh, the WS2812s. So each of these chips has a lot of little mini shift register in it. So you basically program them like you do a, a shift register, or, or very similar. And uh, there's plenty of code out there on the Internet that, that can do that. And then uh, today... Bob is going to talk about uh, the some timers. We're going to learn how to time things uh, using a very popular utility chip, uh, the 555 timer. Yeah, this is pretty much a back to basic electronics kind of uh, demo where we're where we're going to show how you know a couple uses of the 555 timer chip and. The problem with coming up with demos for, for this chip is it is so flexible and there's so many different ways you can use it and so many, there. I mean, it, what you can dream up is the limit of, of what you can do with the chip. So uh, I've put together a, a couple little demos and uh, we'll, we'll walk through it and explain how things work and um, it's, it, it's, very flexible and hopefully we can spark a few ideas with it all but right this is definitely a you know a basic ic that uh oops sorry about that that's okay uh the will uh you know back to a basic ic that uh everybody should you know if you're going to do electronics this is a chip that you've got to have in your pocket somewhere to uh, pull out sometime because it is so uh, flexible and useful for all kinds of projects. Yeah, it definitely is one of those utility things that you see you see everywhere. You see lots and lots of lots and lots of them. Oh yeah, and I think it was the Wikipedia page that I read that somewhere about ten years ago, more than a billion of these things had been sold worldwide. That's a in lot. Their various <laughs> forms. So that that's a ton of chips. Yes. All right. So, so, we ready? Yeah, let's go. All right. Well, 555 timer chip. Um, the one I'm, the ones that I've got tonight are basic uh, TI general purpose chips. Uh, you can get them just about anywhere for for less than a buck. Um, let me switch to the desktop and. We can look at the look at a diagram of it. So here's here's a 555 chip, um, and when you use it, basically you have three different modes that you can run this in. Uh, two of them I've got a demo on. The third one um, I've never actually seen it used in the real world, um, but the uh, the first one is a monostable configuration which is actually this diagram right here, which essentially means that you hit a trigger and you're going to have uh, the output go high for some period of time, and then it shuts off. And it's kind of a one-shot uh, one shot deal. You hit a, and in my demo, I've just got a push-button switch, and, and that's it. And then you've also got what's called a stable, which is this diagram right here, which generates some sort of pulse. And this could be anything from, um, uh, you could use it to generate a PWM signal. You could use it to generate a, um, a pulse to, uh, for, a, for a tone generation. Uh, Anything that requires, um, you know, a square wave signal right there, um, you can use. Uh, you can use this configuration. Uh, the third one is called a bistable, which uh, essentially turns the 555 into a flip-flop. And uh, in my experience, it's just easier to use a flip-flop than to try to uh, get a... 555 timer chip to um, to function that way. So yeah, because they're just, purpose built to do that. They're a little bit easier to right less parts yeah, even. So, yeah, less parts, easier configuration. Although 
you can do it if you want. Um, uh, but I've never actually seen it used in the real world that way. So here's, here's a typical chip, what it looks like in a dip package. Um, and of course, ground is ground. Um, and we'll just go through the pins, um, you know, in numerical order. Um, the ground, that's obvious. Uh, the trigger is what starts the timing interval. And we'll talk about the timing interval here in just a moment. Uh, the output, when the timing interval starts, output goes to, uh, goes high. And high is essentially, uh, depending on which chip you get and which variation you get, it's usually about 1.7, 1.8 volts below whatever your supply voltage is. Um, so in this kit, so in my demo, my supply voltage is five. So, uh, my output, I'm running 3.3 uh, 3 volts. Um, the other one, one thing about, one thing about this is the output also, if, if it's not high, it's tied to ground. So you can actually have something where current is flowing back through this going to ground and I'll actually that's in one of my demos I'll show I'll, I'll show how that works um, the reset chip uh, pin 4 uh, is exactly what it is um, this one in in most chips if you uh, send it to ground it will completely reset everything in the chip although different manufacturers uh, you'll have to you know somebody will have to read the data sheet to find out exactly how the behavior is different manufacturers do things a little differently some of them will halt the timer right where it's at and leave if the output is high it'll leave it high if it's low it'll leave it low uh, in general purpose it usually just shuts off the trigger and the output goes back to low uh, the pin 5 the control um, and this will actually make more sense uh, here in just a minute when we talk about the threshold pin uh, number six. Um, but the control pin allows you to change the default behavior on the pin uh, or, or on the chip, uh, which gets us to pin six. And this is actually the core of, uh, of the chip is um, the threshold you use. 555 timer chips are always used with capacitors and resistors. And essentially what this timer chip is, it's really not a timer. It's a comparator. And what it's doing is it's comparing the uh, source voltage, whatever that happens to be, to the threshold voltage. And by default, it is roughly two-thirds of that voltage. Um, and there's a reason for two thirds that uh, we can talk about if we if we have time in the show. But um, essentially, it's two thirds of the supply voltage. So um, if someone hits the trigger, output goes high, the threshold starts comparing, and when it gets to two thirds, then it shuts everything back off. Um, the uh, pin seven is the discharge, and that's where the capacitor will actually um, dissipate whatever charge has been accumulated. So you're applying a charge to the capacitor. When it reaches two thirds, it shuts everything off, and then the capacitor immediately dissipates. And then, of course, pin eight is the supply voltage. So does that make Mike? Does yep. that make sense? Sure does. So far, so far, so good, huh? Yep. I haven't, okay. All right. So the uh, the first one that I've got here, oops, sorry about that, is actually in, um, oh, I'm sorry. The first one I have is the monostable configuration. Now, one thing in this diagram, uh, this, is, this is kind of a, you know, pin five, uh, in this diagram, they actually show a small uh, capacitor uh, connected right here. I don't have one. Um, 
in sometimes I've I've had a capacitor in there. Sometimes I just leave the pin floating. Uh, in this example tonight, I do have it floating. Um, so, ah, sorry about that. All right, let me switch to the camera. So here is a a simple 555 timer, um, and well, I'll, and I'll just here. So you press the button, the LED comes on, and what's happening is that 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 big capacitor is charging, uh, and this is a mono uh, a basic mono stable configuration. So. Uh, let me go through all the parts on this. Um, we've got a, this is a um, 470 microfarad uh, capacitor, so it's a fairly big capacitor. And then I've got three resistors here that I can show the difference in how quickly this capacitor can be charged. And then these resistors are just for the LEDs to uh turn down the intensity so they don't uh, so they're not so bright on the camera because that's that seems to be a problem for me is you know yes. blowing out the camera um, and then just a simple push button switch with a 10k pull up resistor on it so uh, in this particular case I've I've got this connected to the 10k resistor so press the button LED comes on, this uh, capacitor is charging through that 10K resistor, and it lasts roughly six seconds. Um, and with just a simple change in the resistor, so let me switch to the 2.1. Changing to the, that's a 2.2K resistor, and now instead of taking six seconds, it's just a single second. And then, if, of course, if I come over here and go to this 47K, and we probably won't let this uh, run the whole time, but it actually, this will actually run for 25 seconds. So you have, so this is a, um, you know, you have something where um, you want somebody to press a button or flip a switch and you need something to last for a certain period of time. Well, 555, this is how you do it. And the, the choices of how you get it done are, are really infinite because um, you can change the capacitor and change the resistor and you can get the same behavior from a multitude of different uh, – um, configurations. So now the other thing that I, that we, we talked about a little while ago is, is the output is, is both a, uh, source of, uh, voltage, but it's also sinking to ground. So let me, that off there. And if it works right, that green LED is, it's actually gr being grounded through the chip. So it's draining through the chip. It's draining through the chip. And as soon as I, and let me switch back to five seconds, as soon as I hit the button, the other LED comes on and the capacitor charges. And when it gets to two thirds, then it's, uh, its time has run out, and it switches back, and it's back to being a ground. And, of course, you know, somebody might say, well, how can you have both LEDs connected to the same the same pin? Well, it is an LED. It is current only flows one way. So um, if it's connected to ground, current's only going to flow that way. If it's a – if it's uh, – if it's the source voltage, current's running the other way in, in – LEDs are only going to allow current in one direction. Right. So um, it's it it's flexibility is is tremendous. So, um, but you can have things run very quickly or very slow. Uh, it's it's 
it's all it's all up to what you need and uh, what you, what components do you have uh, to put together the project. So, um, all right, and this is the mono stable one, right? This is the mono stable, um, and and you can use pretty much anything you want as the as the trigger. Um, now, if you if you wanted to, uh, you can use that control pin to change the behavior of um, the of the of the timer. Okay, uh, so uh, if you if you leave the control floating or connect it with a uh, connect it to ground with a capacitor like what was shown in that other diagram. Um, then it's just going to be two thirds of whatever the supply voltage is, um, but you can use that control pin if you want to change that behavior for some reason. I've never, in the real world, I've never bothered to do that um, because whatever behavior I'm interested in, I can find a capacitor resistor combination that gets me to two thirds. Yeah, right. Um, so. Um, but it, but it's there if you need it. Um, so let me, all right. So that's the mono stable. Uh, now let me switch, uh, switch breadboards. Well, what, you go. want me, I can take a break while you do that if you want. Give yeah. You, yeah. Take a break. And all right. I'll, I'll switch breadboards. Okay. You work hard for your business. Your website should too. No matter what industry you're in, select your customizable high-quality design with professionally written content and graphic elements created for your business. Make changes online whenever you like. Switch your background color, page layout, and text anytime. Add your pictures and logo. Upgrade your website with useful one-in-one -one web apps. And integrate social media. Upload your photo albums and embed videos. With one click, optimize your website for viewing on mobile devices. Choose your free domain or you can easily transfer an existing one. Thanks to One in One's SEO tools, customers can find you everywhere. One in One My Website, a professional website created by you. When you open up an Audible audiobook, it opens up your imagination. Enjoy a steamy romance while ironing the sheets. Discover an historic battle while battling the bulge at the gym. Visit audible.com slash free books now to try two books absolutely free. Get caught up in a whodunit during a do-it-yourself project. Listen anytime, anywhere with the Audible mobile app. When you're out for a walk, learn how to climb the corporate ladder. Or bring a little magic to your minivan with a fantasy novel. With over 100,000 titles, Audible is an amazing experience that you can now try absolutely free. And just like our books, there's no binding. Our great listen guarantee lets you exchange a title you don't like for another. No questions asked. Visit audible.com slash free books to download two books of your choice right now. Uh, the biggest thing um, is that, it, well, first thing is this is generating a, a square wave. So you can use this to create anything where you have to have some sort of pulse um, that recreate, you know, that go, that 
runs over and over and over again. This is the way to do it. And the uh, one of the main differences about this is that the trigger is tied to the threshold pin. So what that means is that as soon as a cycle is over, it immediately triggers the next cycle. So it's constantly charging and discharging the capacitor. And uh, so and in this example, I actually have uh, what you're looking at is I've got two different um, capacitors in here just to show the difference in how things work. And I've also got two different resistors in here uh, for um, and there are uh, – if you, if you search the internet, there are a multitude of uh, calculators for A-stable uh, timer chips. So whatever duty cycle you want, whatever frequency you want, there's a, there's a calculator out there. And I started to put one together and realized that, you know, so many people have already done this that there is no sense in recreating the wheel for the millionth time. So... I'm not even bothering with uh, coming up with a calculator. Um, what you're actually looking at here is a 100 microfarad uh, capacitor. And in the calculations, um, and let me switch back to my desktop real quick. you have what's called R1 and R2. And essentially what it means is that uh, uh, you, you're charging and discharge, you charge the capacitor um, through R1, uh, through R1 and R2, and you discharge the capacitor through R2 only. So um, you can uh, manipulate those two resistor values and get what you want. So in this case, R1 is actually a 470 ohm resistor, and R2 is a 4.6K, which gets me one and a half hertz in a duty cycle of roughly 52%. So there's when you're dealing with uh, resistors and capacitors, there's always a you know a variations you know because you have five percent and two percent uh, variability in the in the resistors. You know, there's always a little variance in the in the components. So, uh, do you want to sell that diagram up a little bit? Oh, that this diagram. Yeah, I okay, can't. So, can, we can't see the bottom of it. Oh, I'm sorry. There How's you go. That? There you go. All right. So, so in the in the in the example that we we go back to in just a second. R1 is 470, R2 is 4.6K with a 100 microfarad uh, capacitor, and this capacitor is not there. And the output, I've got it tied. Uh, I'm using the output as both a source and, and ground, so, and I've got the, the two LEDs wired up to... Uh, to go to switch back and forth immediately. So, so they're just in there. They're on the same pin, just backwards of each other, right? That's right. Like the like and the other one you had. Just just like the other one. Right. Okay, so the the trigger is it a two thirds also? Uh, the trigger is just if it goes high, the the output cycle starts, and um, and and as soon as it. Uh, as soon as it goes high, then the then the timer starts. The output pin goes high, and the comparison the the, the comparison of the source voltage to whatever the voltage is in the capacitor starts. So in this case, you can see that we're switching back and forth very quickly. Well, it's because the capacitor is charging very quickly. Right. Does that yes? Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Um, so and it's. And this is the this is the beauty of this uh, of this chip is that you can generate something very quickly. So, um, so let me switch. Uh, let's see. Let me change this, and now.
So now I've got a completely different behavior because I've switched R1 from the 470. This is the 470K resistor, and this is another 4.6K resistor. So I've got it running through here. So now I've got one hertz, roughly, and a 66% duty cycle. So completely different behavior. And all I changed was one resistor out of the out of the whole out of the whole circuit. Right. So completely different behavior. Um, and uh, just for fun, I've also got a uh, this this what we're running right here is the 100 microfarad. I've also got a 4.7. That's the smaller of these two, which. Capacitors. Now, charges is much faster, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is, and, but it's still. Uh, this is twenty-two hertz. It's it's not, it, but that's how fast the uh, uh, the capacitor is charging and discharging. And then, if I want to uh, ramp up the speed even more, if I switch back to the to the to the smaller resistor which means it's going to charge faster so there it is i yeah from my well, point I'm of view i can't sure. i can't see it blinking at all okay well it's actually running about 32 hertz and yeah i can't see it uh it's faster than what the camera can right pick up. um but this is but you can do uh anything with this uh you know you need a tone generated well a small capacitor and uh, the right resistors, and you, you've got a tone generator. Right. And you can have it on whatever frequency, whatever frequency you need. Uh, you need a specific pulse pulse width that's consistent. And, you know, we've talked about, you know, uh, what a Arduino can do at length on several episodes before. Well, if an Arduino can't do it, set up a 555. So... It's a, uh, it's in, it's incredibly versatile. Um, so, and there we are back to. Yeah, so we can, I can barely, I can see the one uh, that's farthest away from the camera is blinking. The, the other one, I can't really tell it's blinking. Okay, and this is, this is back to 22 hertz with a 66% duty cycle. So, you know, you could even have one of these, uh, uh, you want to, I'd turn that off and let me switch switch cameras um, you, you have a, a, a wide range of, of choices uh, and that's the, that's the beauty of this chip and the frustration for doing a demo is that there's so many things you can do with it that uh, it's hard to come up with a, a demonstration that that even comes close to showing the capabilities of what this thing can do. Did you change your course, camera? I just switched back to. I me. don't see you yet. So there you go. Oops, wrong button. Sorry. That's okay. Um, yeah, and that's the that's the the beauty and the frustration with this chip. And of course, um, when I was when I started looking putting together this demo back. You know the the middle or first part of thanks or uh, November before Thanksgiving. Uh, I think Mauser has four dozen different five fifty fives. Right, and, and we should also probably mention a five fifty six is is basically yeah. a dual five fifty five. Right, five fifty six is two of them in the same dip package, and then of course there's the five fifty eight, which is four in the same dip package. And what they do is they share. Uh, the reset uh, voltage and grounds uh, to keep the pin count down, um, but you're still left with the same, uh, you know, the same uh, multiple timers in in the in a single package. Right. Um, and of course, there's high voltage, low voltage. Uh, there's military spec parts. Uh, whatever use you have, there's a there's a chip out. There's a variant out there. Um, but just general purpose ones, you know, these were, you know, these were cheap, you know, they were less than a buck. Right. So, so 
Um, can you describe the two thirds thing a little bit? The uh, the, the math behind that. The math behind that, um, depending on which textbook you read or which source you read, it's basically uh, a capacitor charges itself on an exponential curve or a logarithmic curve, depending on which book you read. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, that it's it's a curved charge. So in in effect, one unit of time, you will charge about 63% of a capacitor. Two units of time, you will get 85%. And it takes about five units of time to get to 99.9% .9 charged, uh, which is typically considered, you know, fully charged. Um, but when you start getting into that second, third, fourth time unit, uh, the variation from one charging cycle to the next charging cycle starts to change. So what they did was they said, okay, forget all of that, you know, fully charged stuff. We don't need that. We just need to be consistent. So we're going to use that first time unit in a logarithmic charge you know, or a, a logarithmic curve. And when you get to one time cycle, boom, there's your trigger. Okay. So it's very consistent, very repeatable. Um, and, and that's why two thirds, uh, is a, is a great number. It's actually 63%, but the rule of thumb is two thirds. So, and, and supply voltage, and, and that's something else is the, the supply voltage actually doesn't make a lot of difference for, for most applications, uh, because, you know, two thirds of, of five volts um, is is a value two thirds of ten volts is a value two thirds of seven point right. one two three five volts right. is still two thirds it doesn't make any difference what the supply voltage is so which makes it nice to get you get consistent results uh, in a wide range of applications um, now one thing about this is you know somebody might say well why can't I make one that um, repeats every millisecond um, and use it as a as a clock. Well, the problem with that is that uh, one re there's too much variation in your components. Okay, you know we were talking about numbers where it was, you know I was one hertz, one and a half hertz, twenty two hertz. You know these were the demos that I was coming up with. Well, the small variations in the components. Well, maybe that. 22 hertz well maybe it was really 21.8 okay right there's no way for me at that point that point eight's enough to to take a timer off you know 0. 0.8 milliseconds it adds up in yeah. time <laughs> yeah that yeah if you're counting milliseconds and trying to do real clock timing that's enough to throw you off very quickly but for pulse width generation one time uh turn some you know turn something on uh, that small variation isn't going to make any difference at all one way or the other. So, um, so yeah, if you, if somebody needs an external clock, they need a, you know, an oscillate, you know, crystal oscillator, uh, instead. And that was actually something I was talking to somebody about an email this, you know, this last week is, uh, using a crystal oscillator with a, with an Arduino. So, Actually, yeah, I think I saw that email to get accurate timing. Yes, to get it's very funny. Accurate timing. It's funny though. This over this past uh, week, couple of weeks, we've had a lot of questions about countdown timers. Yes, um, quite a few of them. So it's, it must be a popular subject. So at some point, we want to go back and and relook at that again. Um, I actually have that um, timer chip from NXP that I have working that I can do as a, as a show as well. Um, that oh, could okay. do that, do that kind of thing as well. So that may be something we we look into in the next couple of weeks here to do something like that. So yeah, we've had a lot of interesting requests the last few weeks for shows. So definitely yeah. on our, definitely on our list of things to do. And I have a bunch of them from a few experiences I've had the last couple of weeks. Like I said, one of them is memory. One of them is creating a web server. I actually create a web server with an Arduino now. So <laughs> all right. So things like that. Well, this 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 one has been sitting around for six weeks, waiting for me to do it. So, well, now you can get your breadboards back. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I 
you spend a month in the hospital, you haven't been using your breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's but true. It, it, it is a great chip to have in your, in, you know, anybody who's doing electronics, this is a great chip to have in your uh, arsenal of goodies. And, um, it, you know, for somebody who, who goes to school and starts learning about electronics, this is actually the first part of an, ex of a, of an example that is used uh, it, it was used in I don't know how many textbooks for many years because you take a 555 timer and combine it with a decade counter and now you've got a control for a um, traffic light. Right. And you use the you just uh, set the timer to be slow enough, uh, you know, slow enough interval and you click that decade counter very slowly and depending on you know how you configure your pins, you turn on and off the the you know two directions of a of a traffic light, and there you have a, a basic traffic light. And that's an example that's used in uh, schools uh, and textbooks all the time. Um, yeah, I would bet a lot of people don't know what a decade counter is. Well, that, that then that may be uh, uh, that may be something for a, for another show. But essentially, it's a chip that uh, it pulses, it sets at the first pin. You pulse it again, it uh, the output switches to the next pin. You pulse it again, it goes to the next pin. Yeah, the, uh, I mean these days everything's microprocessor controlled, so you probably don't you don't see that kind of stuff as much anymore as what you used to see it. Right, you don't you don't see it very often. Uh, well, but they still have their they still have their place. But uh, you could have a fully automated uh, uh, traffic light with um, you know put together several uh, uh, five fifty five timers and 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 another example that that I actually thought about this afternoon and didn't I didn't have time to put it together. Is you can have one 550 timer be the source for the next 555 timer, so the output of one can be the uh, VCC pin of the next one. So you can you can daisy chain these chips on top of each other. Um, the only thing you have to remember is that the output voltage is, you know, roughly. 1.7, 1.8 volts less than the original supply voltage, and that is something you have to, you know, pay attention to when you're calculating. Uh, you know, if you if you want an LED to be at its maximum brightness, you have to make sure you remember that voltage change on the output side. Right, and there's potential you may, depending on what you're controlling, you may have to go to a transistor to turn on a relay on things like that too, because you're not going to have that same right. voltage level. Yeah, and and then if that's right, but as soon as, now that you've got that output voltage, you're right. You can use a transistor, you can turn on a relay, you can do all kinds of things, uh, just like you could anything you know, running off of an Arduino. Uh, so you could easily with one of these control it a fully functional traffic light with some relays. Right. Until I used to do it. That's how, that's what those big boxes exactly are in the corner. Just, that's exactly how they used to do it. So. <coughs> Sorry, that's okay. Um, and yeah, and and you can put a uh, you know a variable resistor in and change the timing on this, and have uh, uh, tone generators that uh, change the frequency. Um, that's another good example. You know, that's another good demo that uh, is in school a lot too. Right. You know, my first experience with a five 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 was. Uh, like you said, with the decade counters, it was a DJ light system that was making the lights flash, ah, and it was okay. using a five 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 with it, and it stopped working. I took it apart and figured it out. I figured out the chip was and and got one and started playing with it. So I never got it fixed, but um, that was my first experience with it. Yeah, the, they're they're just so flexible that uh, it's you can't you can't go wrong with them. I mean. The, yeah, and now we could have done the same thing uh, with an Arduino and a little code, um, and probably done it easier than a 555. But uh, you know, the 555, you turn it on, you're you're done. It it runs right. as long as it, as long as it has power. Right, and the parts don't fail for some reason. And and the parts don't fail because they're 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 so simple. And you know, this chip has been around since the early 70s, so. 
you know, that's why a billion plus have been sold. Right. So, All right. That was great. So there, there's the 555 timer. And you could even pull one of these going into an Arduino to get interrupts and things like that, too, if you wanted to. You're sure, yeah, you could. If you don't trust you, the Arduino timer. <laughs> yeah, if you don't trust the Arduino timer or you're having trouble, uh, you know, with pulse smooth modulation, use one of these and generate whatever frequency it, you, you want and not have to worry about the interrupts in an Arduino. Right. All right. Wow. Well, that's great, Bob. Glad Thank to have you, you back. <laughs> it's good to be back. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't. Uh, all right. So I think that's all we're going to cover this week. Um, don't know what we're going to do for next week, but I got a bunch of things I can do. So we'll just discuss it this week and see what we want to do for next week. But um, we'll, pay for, we'll figure something out. We've got a long list of things we have on our list now to do. Just which, yep. one, which one do we want to do first? Yep. Sounds good. All right. We'll see you, everybody. Good night.